Alright, so division problem. You can never, ever have an imaginary in the denominator. So you got 3 minus 2i up top, you got negative 8 imaginary on bottom, and we can't have an imaginary, so we need to turn it real, which is pretty slick. Times it by an imaginary, and you have to do the same to the top. So you're going to multiply it by imaginary, divided by imaginary, which is just 1, so you can times it by 1 and not change it. But it's totally going to change the appearance, which is kind of a slick trick. So, on the bottom, if you have an imaginary times an imaginary, that is a real, and it is a negative. So on the bottom, you've already got a negative 8, and you're going to times it by this negative 1. So on bottom, you've got a real 8. So now it's legal. Okay, on the top, there are two terms on the top. There was an imaginary, and then there was this real. So if you times the 3 by the imaginary, it turns imaginary. If you times i times i, that's a negative. And you've already got like a negative 2, and you're going to times it by another negative 1. So, and always put it in the form a plus bi. Put the real first, and then the imaginary. So negative 2 and a negative 1, that's going to be a positive 2. And then the imaginaries, three imaginaries over eight. And that is where we'll stop. That's your answer. Okay, you have to expand it. If you got four plus seven i squared, you have to write it out. Four plus seven i times it by itself, four plus seven i. And you have to expand it. Now we're, there's a lot of distributing. So you get times the 4 to the 4, 4 times 4 gives you 16, 4 times the 7i, that creates a 28i, 7i times 4 creates another 28i, 7i times 7i, 7, 7, 7 creates a 49, but the i times i creates a negative, so now you got to combine your like terms. So let's do the reals. Let's do 16 and a minus 49. And that should total a negative 33. And then if you had your imaginaries, 28 and 28 should give you 56 imaginaries. And that's where we'll stop. A plus BI. So the real first, then the imaginary second. The next one, you have multiplication so we're timesing those two and then you got a multiplication here so you just it's just like this it's just like two times three times four if you've got a couple multiplications just go left to right two times three is six then times that to four you should end up at 24 so do not distribute it's not a distributive problem you just have a couple multiplications so just go left to right so let's do these first so the 8 times the negative 6, that gives you negative 48. And then the i times i is a real, and it's a negative, so we'll turn that positive. Then, you're going to take that answer and times it to this binomial. You're going to times it to the 6 and to the negative 7i. So if you take the 48 and times it to the 6, 48 times 6... That will give you a 288. Then if you take the 48 and times it to the negative 7, that will create a negative 336i. And you're done. Cannot combine any like terms. You just have reals here, imaginaries there. And we're good. Next one is kind of um, tricky. This is really like a negative 1 times this. You have to distribute that negative to both those terms. you got to distribute it to the 2 and then to the 5i. So this 7 add 2i. You can't really combine those. Those are not like terms. I'm just going to put a plus, and I'm going to take that negative to both. If I take it to the 2, it's going to be minus 2. If I take it to the minus 5i, it's going to be... Or to the 5i, it's going to be negative 5i. And now you got like terms. 
So I'm going to combine my 7 and my minus 2, and that should give you 5. And then combine your 2 imaginaries and your negative 5 imaginaries, and that is a negative 3 imaginaries. So you can leave it as 5 plus negative 3 imaginaries, or you can just go 5 subtract 3 imaginaries that are the same thing, whichever you like, no big deal. Okay, the next one. Okay, that plus is nice. So let's multiply these two. A negative 6 times 7 is a negative 42. And it's imaginary. And then it is a plus. Now you've got to distribute the 7 to both those terms. So 7 times a negative 4 is a negative 28. And 7 times a negative 4i is a negative 28i. Okay, so now... I've only got three terms, and this is the only real I've got, so I'm going to put it first, negative 28, and the imaginaries, I'm going to total up my imaginaries, if I've got a negative 42 and a negative 28, just do another calculator, negative 42 minus 28, should have a total of negative 70 imaginaries, and that's your answer. And that is it for the imaginary. So if you can if you feel good about those complex, then you're in business. Now the rest of this, this is a review from the first half of the quarter. So your irrationals. So here's your instructions. Express these in radical form. Okay, radical looks like this. So these are in exponential form. So we got exponents. And you're timesing these. So you are going to take those exponents, 4 fifths, add 1 half. And you're going to add them up. So you're on a calculator. And then your calculator should tell you that that is equal to 13 tenths. Now we've got to morph it to a radical. So the radical goes here, the x goes there, the 13 is there, and 10 is your index. So that's a big deal. They're going to come out 10 at a time. So if you can get it to this point, that's a good start, but we need to simplify it. So because it's a 10th root, we got to take out all powers of 10. So you can view this as like a, a 10, whoops, times x cubed, so I got 13 of them total, and because it's a 10th root, it's going to undo that power of 10, so this x comes out, and you still have to leave the 10 there, that just tells me they come out 10 at a time, so I took one group of 10 out, and then there is 3 left over. So anytime that you multiply letters, you just add the exponents if they're the same base, so that's x, that's x, so just add them up. Okay, now number four is going to be a little different. Number four is kind of given already in radical form, but then they raise it to a power. So my first move is I'm going to transform it to kind of make it look like three. I'm going to make it look in exponential form. So if I get the fifth root of x cubed, I'm going to morph it to be x to the three fifths. And that's going to be raised to the 7 thirds. Okay, now, if you have an exponent to another level, you must multiply your exponents. So the math is 3 fifths times 7 thirds. So on your calculator, if I go 3 fifths um, times 7 thirds, that is going to equal... That equals seven fifths. Okay, now once we get to seven fifths, it's easy to morph into its radical version. So let's put a radical. X goes there, seven there, five there, and we're the same thing. We gotta simplify it. So they're gonna come out five at a time. The index is five. 
So, if I've got seven of them, that's really like a group of five and a group of two. And this fifth root undoes that group of five, so that comes out. So your final answer, a group of five came out, and you've got two left over. Okay, now let's go the other way. They're given in radical form, and they want you to change them to their exponential version. So, here we go. The exponent of the 6 is a 1. 6, we really try and kind of break them down, but that's only 1, 2, and 1, 3. And this means they got to be six or more. If I have six or more, then they start coming out. So that's really simplified kind of as far as it's going to go. And I've got four x's. And if they come out six at a time, I don't have enough to take any out. So that's done. So this one, there's nothing we can simplify. But if we morph it, it will morph to six. The exponent is one. It goes on top. Index is 6, 6 to the 1, 6 times x, exponents your numerator, and this index is your denominator. There we go. So a lot of you will forget the exponent of the 6. If there's not one, it's an invisible 1. Don't forget that. It's a big deal. And 4, 6, you can simplify that. So for a final answer, we want 6 to the 1, 6 times x. 4, 6, you need to simplify that to 2 thirds. Okay, number 6. Now, they come out 8 at a time. So 128, if we start breaking up 128, 128, divide that by 4, 4 and 32, 4 is a 2 and a 2, so done, done. 32 is 8 and 4, 8 is 2 and a 4, and a 4 is a 2, and a 2, and a 4 is a 2, and a 2. So, in place of 128, we're going to put 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We got 2 to the 7. <coughs> okay, now, it's an 8th root. So that means they come out 8 at a time, and I've only got 7 in there, so it's done. It is simplified as far as it can go. You cannot bring anything out. But if we morph it, they're going to tell you they want 2 to be the base, so we're good with that. And that means 7 is going to be the numerator, and 8 is your denominator. Okay, then these last 4 are just plus times divide and just the regular simplify so let's simplify these okay first one let's multiply when you multiply you multiply your coefficients so any number on the outside negative 5 will times the 2 so that creates negative 10 then the inside you multiply anything on the inside so 8 will multiply the 2 and that gives 16 and let's do your x's. And I've got 1 here. So x cubed times x to the 1 is really, you add them. So 3 plus 1, x to the 4. Okay, now, that's a perfect square. Square to 16 is 4. So hopefully you got it memorized. If not, you break it down. 4, 4, 2, 2, 2, 2. So square to 16 is 2 to the 4th x to the fourth and the index there's not one so it's a two so it's a square root so they're going to come out two at a time so how many twos are in a power of four and there are two so that means i'm going to bring two twos out which is four square to 16 is just four and same with your x's i'm going to bring two x's out so this one, everything came out. There's nothing left on the inside. So if I multiply everything that came out, there was a negative 10. I'm going to times that by 2 times 2. So that's a negative 40. And x times x is just x squared. OK, 
Okay, number eight. If we bust up 144, that's a 12 and a 12. So that's a six and a two. A two and a three. Six and a two. Two and a three. All right. So I am going to swap out. Okay, the index is four. That means they come out four at a time. So let me count my stuff up one two so I've got two to the fourth times three I've got two threes and I've got twelve X's okay so they're coming out four at a time so this four through undoes that power of four so two is out um, threes I don't have enough so I'm just gonna turn it back into a three times three and turn it back to a nine X's, I got 12 X's, and if they come out four at a time, that means three X's come out, and that is your answer. Okay, let's scoot these up. Okay, number nine is an addition problem. So you can only add like terms. So if I have two square roots of three, plus 3 square root of 5 that's just like 2x plus 3y x's and y's are totally different so you cannot add them up so that would just be your answer but if I have 2x plus 3x since they're like terms you can add them to total 5x so we have got three terms here and they happen to be like terms so I got negative this is exactly like negative 3x plus 2x plus 2x they are all square roots of 54 so they are all like terms so we can add them up and you just add the numbers in front the coefficients so negative 3 plus 2 plus 2 if I combine all my like terms you should end up with 1 square root of 54 and let's do that first if we add your like terms you should get 1 square root of 54 now so 54 we're going to break up that's a 9 and a 6 any number bigger than 4 break it up 9 is a 3 and a 3 that's done that's done 6 is a 2 and a 3 done done so a square root and I have got 3 to the 3 times just 1 2 okay so I got enough threes so if they're gonna come out two at a time and I got three in there that's the same thing as like a 3 squared times 3 to the 1 I got three threes so this square root is gonna kill that square so 3 comes out and that stays left in so on the outside I've got a 3 and a 3 in and a 2 in so I've got 6 that stays in turn it back times them together 3 times 2 is a 6 and we're good okay last one division you cannot have an irrational or an imaginary on the bottom so in front of here the number is 1 3 and 1 play together, and that cannot simplify. But these play together, 4 and 12. And 4 and 12 do simplify those first, and it's going to be a lot easier. So 4 twelfths, you're going to change to 1 third. Okay. Now, let me bring this over. So I got 3 square root of 1 over 1 square root of 3. You cannot have a square on the bottom, so just like an imaginary, it's pretty easy fix. Times it by one, and your one is going to be square root three on bottom, square root three on top. Okay, now on the bottom, so if you times your numbers out front, I just have one, so one times one is just one. <coughs> but if you times a three and a three, that's a square root nine. And square root 9 is the whole number 3. So now on the bottom, I got a nice legit whole number. Okay, on top, times the numbers out front. 3 times 1, that will give you a 3. 
and times your insides, 1 times 3, that gives you a 3. And now these are both on the outside, so they'll play together. So 3 divided by 3 is just 1. So your answer is just square root of 3.